welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, hopefully you are watching me in black and white right now. Hopefully I haven't forgotten. If I have, hi, welcome to Technicolor. I haven't forgotten so far, so fingers crossed me saying this will prompt me to actually go, oh yeah, it's meant to be in black and white. Uh, as you can no doubt tell from the thumbnail, the title, and if you have read it, the description, this is the latest episode in my pick series, and I am delighted that once again I am collabing with the beautiful Val. Now she used to be Gimme Lip and More, she's now Ms Mischief because she felt like that was a more appropriate channel name for her. She and I have collabed a number of times now, not just on this photo series, but on a lot of other things as well. So if you want to find out exactly what the photo is that inspired our looks today, And exactly how this looks in glorious Technicolor. Then my friend, you, you have the best seat in the house. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right. Hopefully the intro was in black and white. I haven't forgotten yet, but there's going to be a time. There will be a time. Now, this is the continuation of my pick series. Um, I'm collabing with Val, who was originally Gimme Lip and More, and she's recently renamed her channel to Ms Mischief, which she feels fits her personality better. And she and I have done a lot of different collabs together. And uh, she messaged me and went, look, I found this picture. I really, really want to do this. Can we do another photo one? And I'm like, absolutely, yes. So I just realised my tripod was tilted and so were you. Oh, so was I, whatever. Um, and this is the picture, which is a gorgeous... I'm looking at it on my phone, clearly, because I'm waving at thin air, the magic of the movies. Um, this gorgeous kind of seahorse, unicorn, narwhal -y type mystical creature basically um, it's got like the, the front half of a unicorn and the, the back half of a fish um, the front half is all teals and blues with a bit of a flash of the orange and yellow in his ears and on his webs between his fingers um, and then the tail is this beautiful vibrant green with the yellow and orange fins. So he looks stunning and the minute she sent me that I'm like, oh hell yes I want to do that with you please, thank you. <laughs> so I have pulled all of these because I haven't got all those colours in one palette. So I'm going into Jeffrey's 24 karat highlighter palette and I'm going to use Liberace for the yellow because it's such a beautiful shade. And then I'm grabbing Mini Jawbreaker and I'm going to use Orange Crush obviously for the orange bits. And then we're on to Blush Tribe I'm grabbing Pastel Tribe I'm going to use Donna here, this blue. And then my absolute favourite of all palettes. This is this to me, if I had to choose one palette over everything, even over my Jefferies, this would be the winner. This Hasina too. It, it's, it's my colour scheme, folks. Look, it's purple, it's green and it's blue. <laughs> and it has this gorgeous, I mean, this is a shade that is unique to my collection. I don't think I've got one like that anywhere else. And it's called Re and it's the perfect teal. 
So, I'm going to be juggling pallets, folks. Pray with me that I don't drop any of them. <laughs> right, this is still a teaching channel and because of my chronic pain and because I want beginners to be able to keep up, I don't go that quickly and I talk you through every step of the eye look. If you're more experienced, there is a speed widget up there. Feel free to speed me up. It's not an issue. It really isn't. That's what the speed widget is there for. Um, I'm going to zoom you in and talk you through the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes because they're often mistaken for each other and the work around so that you can follow any tutorial if you have either of those eye shapes. Obviously if you're a long term viewer of mine you will have heard this because I say it at the start of pretty much all my videos. Um, so feel free to fast forward until you see me wave uh, a brush at you that has colour on it. See you at that point. The rest of you, let's get you zoomed in and talk you through. Right. Now I have got deep set eyes. So I get the same issue that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour from the lid to the static lid. Um, if I'm cutting my crease, I can't just cut the socket, I have to go onto the upper lid. And when I'm wearing glitters, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch right through there. So, how do you tell the difference? With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. So only if your static lid completely covers right down to the lash line, part or all of your eyebrow lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. So, how is that different from deep set eyes? I will explain. I'll, I'll demonstrate with this one because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can close it and still make sure I'm on camera and that I'm in focus. If I cover my visible mobile lid and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away. And if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, I have lid space there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives me the same issue that people with hooded lids get. So, the work around for the two different types of eyes are very different. That's why it's important to know which type of eye you actually have. If you have hooded lids, grab a brush like this or a pencil brush and sketch out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between the new crease and the brow, so use slightly smaller blending brushes than the person doing the tutorial. Um, I tend to leave, unless I'm doing an editorial look, I tend to leave a gap between the colours and my brow. You may find you have to go right up to your brow if you really are short on kind of real estate here. If you have deep set eyes like myself, what we have to do when we're putting colours through the crease is sit back, relax our brows and just make sure we've brought it up high enough to be seen when our eyes are open. So you can see it's two very different workarounds, but that's why it's important to know which type of eye you have. Right, I am going to start off with one of my Royal and Langnickel brushes. And I'm going to go in with, uh, this is a Chic Pro, I have this one here. Okay, should be over there. Uh, Royal and Langnickel Crease Brush in the Sheep Pro range. Basically, it's a soft, round blending brush. And I'm going to start off, I think I'll go into the Pastel Tribe to start with. And I'm going to go into Dana or Dana, which is the light blue that I'm using. Right, people that are fast forwarding need to press play now. Hello. There we go. Right. Um, 
I do have a code for Blush Tribe, non-affiliated. I also have a non-affiliated code for the eye primer that I'm using for Chrome Pebble. Love this. It goes on dry. It's not sticky at all, which means you don't have to set it. You can blend on it straight away. By far the best eye primer I've ever found. I've not touched my Mac Soft Loca Paint Pot or my Tarte Shape Tape since I've had that. Um, white is the lightest, which is what I'm using. At the other end of the spectrum, it's got uh, a deep chocolate brown and a black, and then three other skin toned shades in between. So you should be able to find something that will work for you. You can actually, if you're unsure, buy a half pot. So it'll be this size, but it'll only be half filled. Um, so if you want to try it out, you can do. All of my um, discount codes are listed in the description box and they clearly state whether or not I earn from them. So, I'm going to start off with this blue and I'm just going to start little circular buffing movements. Now I've not put too much on this brush to try and minimise the fallout and also because I know just how pigmented blush tribe shadows are. You can see that's blended out really nicely. Now I do circular movements going in this direction coming towards the nose and then a bit of a bounce and reverse the direction coming back out again. This to me is kind of the Viennese waltz because you have natural turns, you have reverse turns and then you have a little bit of a fleckle right in the middle. Can you tell I've been watching Strictly Come Dancing which is the, um, the original show that then went to the US and became Dancing with the Stars I think. So I do sometimes struggle here and here with dry patches, um, but that seems to have gone on great today, which is awesome. I've got loose hair on my face and it's really fidgeting me. So, Val, as I said, she and I have clad on a number of different things. She has the most amazing soothing voice. We've both done kind of ASMR-y type. Um, films together where we've read poems or um, you know different things and we've also done obviously the pick challenge um, and we've had a couple of others where we've sort of challenged each other to use a specific shade um, she's a nurse and funnily enough both my stepmum and my mother-in-law are both nurses so I kind of feel an affinity with her with both my mums being nurses collabing with a nurse kind of feels like collabing with family um, she is not scared of colour which is awesome she's really happy to you know dive in with any kind of colour really and she does some amazing looks. She very often um, features her grandchildren and her children in her films, which is great to see. Right, I'm just sitting back and checking that the shapes are the same and the colour tone is the same because obviously I'm not James Charles, I don't Photoshop the finished look, my eyes are not symmetrical and sometimes you have to do two slightly different shapes just to get them to look the same both sides. I think that's okay. As you can see, I have left a bit of a gap just between the top of the colour and the brow. I kind of went a bit high there, but never mind. Um, because I like to leave a bit of a gap for when I put my brow highlight on. Right, one palette down. Palette number two. I'm just going to clean the blue off of this. Um, I've got a clean washcloth here that I use. I used to use a colour switch, um, but I found that using either a microfiber cloth or a clean washcloth or a towel um, it's much gentler on the bristles. And also, if you are wetting a pigment that you've got on your brush, it then dries the brush off for you before you go back into the pressed pigment again, so that's good. Um, I also wouldn't recommend using a colour switch on natural bristles at all. Um, it's not kind to them. 
Right, so I'm going into Hasina 2, same brush. I'm going in with Ri. Look how beautiful that is. Ooh, I love this colour. And I'm just going to blend this into the blue and run it through the crease. And just, I hold the brush right at the end so I put as little pressure on as possible because you don't want to put pressure on your eyes because the skin on your eyes is the most delicate, sensitive, thinnest skin on your body, basically. And you can see that I'm getting a little bit of patching just where I've got that dry patch. But we can buff that out. And if it doesn't buff out, all I do is pick up a little bit of extra pigment and just tap it on in little circles like this rather than full on blending and voila I really like this I'm so glad Val sent this photo over it's so pretty but yes so if you haven't already seen Val oh god that's my phone hang on sorry about that that was my bestie right <laughs> yes if you haven't seen Val before um, where have you been? Have you not been to my channel before? We have collabed many, many times. Um, and she really is a lovely woman. Uh, we haven't just collabed one-on-one. -on -one. We've been involved in group collabs. Um, she was responsible for starting the uh, the Nightmare on YouTube collab group, which I actually named. I was quite proud of myself for that. Um, right, this is the eye that was pulled around a lot when I was a kid, and I'm in mean like five years old. So I've got super deep creasing here, and yeah, sometimes the circling doesn't work because the creases are so deep, so I do have to stretch my lid out here. Don't do this unless you have to. Sometimes the circling is enough, um, but so I do have to just check it, but... I'm really liking how this looks turning out actually. Really liking how this looks turning out. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to use the green. I might put it underneath my eye. Because I quite like the teal and the blue at the top. Brushes, little brushes, little brushes. This is a Studio 5 London pencil brush. And I'm just going to go into Re and just put some on this outer corner here. Should I do a halo eye? Yeah, why not? I haven't done one for a while. So I'm going to put some just on that very inner corner as well. I'm not going to do a cut crease. Mainly because my bestie needs me to run her somewhere shortly. And I haven't got time to do a cut crease. But I don't think this look is going to need it anyway. Because the Jeffrey stuff that I'm going to be using is highly pigmented. So... I'll be fine. Okay. Clean my brush. It is clean, it's just stained with the high pigment colours. Right. This is one of the Jeffrey Morphe brushes, the JS24. It's actually a lip brush. But it's great for detail work. Uh, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, I've already said that. Actually, I'm not sure this is the brush I'm going to need. I might need the smudger instead, so I've got a little bit more control. Let's grab that one. Give that just a quick wipe. I know it needs a wash, but 
just make sure there's no remaining pigment on it from previously. This again is a Jeffrey Morphe, this is the JS10. Right, I'm going to go into the mini breaker and load both sides of the brush up with the orange crush shade and then wet the brush. Never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will ruin the pigment. I always sort of do this with it and wipe the ferrule on my hand like that so that it stops any moisture going down and loosening the glue holding the bristles. Right, I've got a little tiny mirror here that I'm going to look down into so hopefully I'll still be on screen and you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to pop a little bit of orange just on the outer edges of the space that I left on my lid. Blending into the teal just a little bit on the outer edge here. Pretty. Dry the brush off on the washcloth before going back in and reloading the brush with pigment again. Um, I'm just using a setting spray, but you can use anything. You can use a moisturising spray like. Mario Badescu, um, you can use, um, I mean, Fix Plus is a moisturising spray, you can use that, you can use a priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray, uh, you can just use clean water. Uh, you just literally need to dampen the pigment. And then I should do the same with this eye, and this one. Being one that I'm blind in, I can actually shut it. See what I'm doing a bit better. And just blend that in the teal at the edge there. Not quite sure why that's gone so much more orange on that side than on this one. Just blend some of the teal into it then, otherwise it's going to look a little bit odd. There we go. Right, clean the brush off and of course drying it at the same time. And then I'm going to go into Liberace. Now I don't need to wet this. This is, this is his highlighter form that tends to go um, hard pan and you just occasionally you just have to rough the top up it's because there's so many oils in the formulation but that's why you don't need to wet it because you can still get look at that and I'm literally just popping that in the middle Boom. Um, if you do get something that's gone hard pan, like my Liberace has, literally just get a clean spoolie and just really gently scratch the top of the surface and that will loosen the stuff that's packed together because of the amount of oils that are in his formulation. It's much better than using the tape trick because this way you don't actually lose any of the pigment on the tape. How pretty is that? Get in. Right, I'm just going to close that back up before I drop it. Now, 
I am going to, uh, this is just a clean cloth with micellar water on. I'm going to pause you while I put foundation and whatnot on. This is how I just tidy up my edges, okay, in case you were wondering. Yes, I shall put foundation and base products on. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now you, you will have no delay whatsoever. I will, you will see me instantly. I, however, will see you the very next time that I press the record button. Hello. I decided to use my teal coloured uh, pomade today. I'm so gutted that Revolution don't seem to have these on their site anymore. I really hope they're just changing the packaging of them maybe. Um, this one is called Trendy Turquoise. Okay then. Um, I'm going to grab... This is actually the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. But I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for getting under your bottom lashes. And I'm going to go into Hesina 2 and go into Erin which is that lovely bright green. I'm just going to buff that all the way along the lower lash line. Really softly. That is such a super pretty shade. Right, now this is actually a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably 10 years ago now. And I'm going to go back into the 24 karat palette and I'm going to go into Sarcophagus. And I'm going to pop some of this just up under the tail of my brow, both sides, and then in a corner, I'm going to run it along and just blend it with the green that I ran along underneath my eye. I like to do that, run it under the tear duct. I just think it really opens my particular eye shape up anyway. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I bung some more of this sarcophagus all over my face. Put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair and I'll be right back. Once again you will not see a delay. So I'll see you, um, well, well, you'll see me, right now. There we go, there's my finished look. Um, I used my Catrice Glamondol Waterproof Volume Mascara, which is the dupe for Benefits Bad Girl Bang, but it's waterproof and it's cheaper and it doesn't smudge or flake. Um, I believe they've now bought out a waterproof Bad Girl Bang, haven't tried that yet. Lippy is actually a combination. I actually treated myself in her sale to some Pat McGrath lippies. I know. I just had to see what the fuss was about. And this was a twin pack. This is the Femme Modern Liquid Lipstick. And that came in a pack with this bronze astral vinyl gloss. So... These are what I've got on my lips. It's quite a sticky gloss. I didn't put a lot on either. But, 
There we go. I'm going to put the picture back up over here again. What do you think? I mean, obviously I've gone... I've, I've made the orange and the yellow more um, accent and the green more of an accent and I've really concentrated more on the teal and the blue for my look. But that's, that was just the colours that drew me in most in that picture and that's the beauty of this because the whole point of this photo inspiration is you only use colours that are in the photo but you don't have to use all of them. So for me today I was drawn more towards the teals I wanted to use the others just as pops of colour so that's what I did. Um, I did a neutral lip so it wouldn't draw away from the eyes. What do you think? Would you have done like this or would you have pulled different colours from that picture? Let me know in the comments section how you would have done your eye look if you were using that as your inspiration. Now, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed because even if I'm appearing in your uh, recommended videos, there's no guarantee I am still on your subscription list. Um, having a real problem recently with YouTube deleting people. In one day I gained three new subscribers. Yay! But when I looked at my overall numbers, I was down by two, which meant YouTube had deleted five people off my account. Now, every time my account is still small enough that I have had an email through every time someone has followed me. And every single one of them is either somebody that has commented on one of my films or has liked one of my films. So they're not bots. I haven't paid. I mean, for goodness sake, if I'd paid for subscribers, don't you think I'd be over a thousand by now? Um, so I don't know what YouTube are up to in terms of deleting subscribers. But please just double check you're still subscribed, please double check you've still got all of the, the, the bits ticked that you need to have ticked in order to get the notification emails through because apparently those are not coming through either. Once you've done all that and you've liked and you've commented and maybe even shared this video, I'm going to need you to go over and check out Val's video and see just exactly what she was inspired by. Which shades called to her the most? Will our looks be similar or will they be vastly different? So far there's only been two occasions that the looks have been similar. And even then, they were still different enough that they weren't the same. So, I think this is about episode 31, 32 of this photo series. So, um, I'm loving the fact that everybody else seems to be enjoying taking part in this. Um, as much as I enjoy doing it myself. So, it's really important for me, please, that now you've watched me, to go over and check out Val. Subscribe to her, like her, comment on her film. Just show her the same love that you show me in my comment section. Thank you. If, however, this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm guessing if you've made it this far through, you must have liked just a little bit. Uh, if you did, it'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family by clicking that subscribe button and then jumping through all the myriad of hoops that YouTube insists you jump through now in order to get notifications. Gone are the days when you could just like a channel and they'd tell you when a new film came out. Bye bye. Uh, once you've done all that, I have got an awful lot of other films you can watch, not just the Pick series, although that is in a folder all of itself. There is a photo inspiration playlist. Um, I've also got a collaborations playlist where all of these plus all the other collaborations I've done will all be together. So if you're just interested in watching collaborations, you can open that one up. If you're just interested in seeing the photo inspiration series, you can open that one up. Or you can just pick and choose at random, set a playlist going, and enjoy. Right. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, darling, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.